It's an Ask Anything mailbag on Dolphins today, and there are plenty of questions to get going with because, oh, yes, the offseason, but lots have happened, including the Dolphins agreeing to part ways and mutually agreeing to part ways with former defensive coordinator Vic Fangio. Obviously, that's on everyone's mind, but nothing is off limits on these Ask Anything mailbags. So without further ado, let's get it going. Our first question from Brian35 using the hashtag Dolphins. And I should have said you can super chat to skip the line as well. But Brian asks, do you want to promote Bevel as OC and like let Mike step away from play calling? Love this question because it was asked to Mike McDaniel, and we're shifting now from defense coordinator to offensive coordinator. So we're on the offensive side of the ball, but in the initial offseason press conference by Chris Greer, the general manager, and Mike McDaniel, someone did ask Mike McDaniel if he'd be willing to give up play calling duties, and he gave a very political answer, I thought. He didn't come right out and say, no, I'm the play caller of this team. And he didn't say, yeah, absolutely. He, what, the way he phrased it was essentially, we're about winning. We're about evaluating our process that leads us to winning. Whatever we can do to help us win, I'm in favor of. And so, again, leave that, take with that what you will. But I don't think he's saying he's going to give up play calling duties. But he didn't shut it down either. As far as Daryl Bevel, he was a really good play caller for the Lions when he was the quarterback, or when he was the offensive coordinator there. Um, a couple of years ago, so he does have some play calling experience. But if the Mike McDaniel were, if he was to give up play calling duties, I think Frank Smith would be next in line as the offensive coordinator for now. Now, again, we just talked about Frank Smith being a candidate for the head coaching job with the Panthers, so then it would be Bevel. But I don't think Mike McDaniel is going to hand over the play calling duties in general, let alone to his quarterback coach and Daryl Bevel. This one from Sherry May. There are individuals in chat suggesting Finns hire Belichick. May I state that, the, for the record, I loathe, detest, and despise that coach. Worse than I hate Saban. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Remember your Dolphins history. Great reminder from Sherry May. I did see people suggesting that maybe the Dolphins make an offer for Bill Belichick to be their defensive coordinator. But I don't think Bill Belichick... Arguably the most decorated coach in NFL history. Obviously behind Don Shula, he's number one. He's our guy. But that said, the best coach of this generation, Bill Belichick, in this era of football, is not going to step down and be a defensive coordinator somewhere. He's interviewing for head coaching jobs. He's got an inter well, I should say he interviewed for the Falcons head coaching job. I think it's either a head coaching job for Belichick or retirement. I mean, the guy's getting up there. And in fact, if I were Belichick, just go play golf. Go hang out on the beach. You have nothing left to prove. And I certainly don't think he's going to take a step down from head coach to defensive coordinator. So I don't think there's anything to worry about there, Sherry May. And a super chat from Sherry May. Shout out to the mailbag. Appreciate the support of Sherry May. That's why she's one of the realest of the real. She is the realest of the real on Dolphins today. We love you, Sherry May. Thanks for the super chat. From Patrick Starr. Saw a Bleacher Report lists Tua as the sixth best quarterback under 25 years old. When will the Tua hate stop? That's a great question, Patrick Starr. Listen, I get teased by some of my colleagues here at uh, Chat Sports that I'm the biggest Tua fan and that I do a Tua show every single week. And you know what? Sometimes you have to to send that message home because I do believe you can win with Tua Tagovailoa. I believe there's a lot of credible talking heads in the National Football League that also think you can win with Tua Tagovailoa. He possesses the ability to be an upper echelon quarterback in the National Football League. Is he John Elway? Is he, jo is he Joe Montana? No. Is he one of is he the top in a, the top 5? Probably not. But Again, the Bleacher Report article, I saw the exact same one. Six best quarterback under 25 years old. Here's what I'll say about Tua Tungavaloa. Led the NFL in passing yards. That doesn't happen by accident. Had arguably one of his best seasons. Stayed healthy all season long and helped orchestrate the number one total offense in the NFL. And I know statistical outliers, blah, 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 blah. one in six versus teams with a winning record. I hear all that. But let's not shut the door on Tua Tungavaloa. I think there's still more gas in the tank for number one in the field, number one in my heart, Tua Tagovailoa. I want you, though, to rank Tua among other NFL quarterbacks. Where does he stack up? I have him in the upper echelon. I think 
his win-loss record is certainly something to make note of. It's better than a lot of guys like Justin Herbert, for one to be exa exact. And the injury bug that had plagued him prior was nowhere to be found this season. And you can't say the same about guys like Joe Burrow and all of the quarterbacks that were hurt this season. Deshaun Watson, the list goes on. And I'm not here saying if you get hurt, then you're a bad quarterback. But something should be said of the durability that Tua showed this season. And again... 11 wins for the, C for the Dolphins this season in the playoffs. Obviously ran out of gas, lost a lot of guys on defense, and the offense could have played better. But let me know where you rank Tua among NFL quarterbacks. This one from Anthony Manzano, a.k.a. hashtag mob. How about Jim Leonard, the D.C. at Wisconsin? He has NFL experience. He was a D.C. for the Vikings when they made the NFC Championship with Brett Favre. That is a name that we put on our initial defensive coordinator search list. However, I don't think Jim Leonard is the type of hire that moves the needle. And I'm not saying that's what constitutes a good hire, whether or not it moves the needle. But I don't know what Jim Leonard can bring to the table that some of these other potential D.C. candidates can't bring to the table table. You look at a guy like Brandon Staley. I think he's got to be the leader in the clubhouse when you consider he has the same agent as Mike McDaniel. He has head coaching experience, but he's made his money as a defensive guy. And what an opportunity for him to hit the ground running after being fired by the Chargers and to become a defensive coordinator. And I think internally you have a great candidate with Anthony Campolini, the linebackers coach, who again, I hate to always go back to hard knocks, but you look at the way he interacted with his guys, the way he motivated the team, I think he's somebody to keep the eye on as well. And promoting from within, I think is good, um, good mojo for the organization as a whole. There's a level of familiarity there. There's obviously the... Um, knowledge of the organization, the knowledge of the current system, not a lot of change that would be needed as far as the adjustments, less of a learning cor curve, and so on and so forth. So I think promoting from within makes a lot of sense as well. This question from Every Noodle. How does Ron Rivera and Robert Sala sound as DC? They both sound excellent. Um, as far as I know, Robert Sala is still the head coach for the Jets. So um, unless... You know something I don't. I don't think he's going to leave a head coaching job to be a DC. But Ron Rivera was just let go by the commanders. And you talk about a proven guy in the NFL, took the Carolina Panthers to the Super Bowl, and then didn't necessarily have the best tenure in Washington. But Riverboat Ron is respected among all NFL circles. And I think that would be a big name that makes a lot of sense when you combined Ron Rivera with Mike McDaniel. Although, although, here's what I will say is maybe a little bit of a caveat or just, if nothing else, some a different perspective to think of. Ron Rivera, also very much an old-school football guy, just like Vic Fangio was, and there's a lot of speculation that that was part of the root of the lack of cohesiveness between Mike McDaniel as the head coach, as a new-school guy, and as an old-school guy, Vic Fangio, who, again, you know, say what you will about Vic Fangio, say what you will about Mike McDaniel, you can certainly, certainly conclude that they have drastically different personas, drastically different styles, and sometimes opposites don't always attract, and there's a lot of, a lot of lack of cohesiveness, a lot of disconnect that was on display from the Dolphins' defense in comparison to the way Mike McDaniel and some of the younger guys on the offensive staff interacted with the players. Want to thank Fanatics for helping make today's show possible. And I'm telling you what, it might be the offseason, guys, but it's never the wrong time to stock up on some Miami Dolphins swag. And we've got a special link for you. We'll leave it in the comments and description of today's video. And I was browsing on the Fanatics site. I showed you some of the hats earlier last week. I like the hats, but you can't go wrong with some of the NFL Jam graphic tees. I'm telling you guys, these are timeless. There's also also a Dan Marino one that I absolutely love. Oh, right on cue. Look at that. The Dan Marino one, as, as we talk quarterbacks here on Dolphins today, you can't talk Dolphins quarterbacks without Dan Marino. Make sure you pick up one of these NFL Jam graphic tees available on Fanatics. And like I said, we've got a special link for you down in the comments and description of today's video. So if you want to stock up on the best Dolphins swag and be swagging out with the aqua and orange, make sure you click on that link and check out the NFL Jam tees.
Now, continuing on with this Ask Anything mailbag, Waddle, maybe Jalen Waddle, maybe Jalen Waddle's brother, somebody in the Waddle family asking this question using the hashtag Dolphins. Do you think we get rid of Howard? He has been underperforming lately. If you watch my perfect off-season video that's available on the channel, we sent that out about a week ago. About a week ago, I talked about exactly this. And here's what I'll say about Xavier Howard. He's one of the highest paid players on the Dolphins roster. And when you throw in the fact that Vic Fangio, he gone, there's a lot of question marks on the defensive side of the ball. And also, when you consider the Dolphins are in the second worst cap situation in all the NFL, they're looking to save money. So restructuring Xavier Howard's contract could fall into that category because he has been one of the highest paid players for the Dolphins and hasn't really performed combined, combined with the fact that he just wasn't healthy down the stretch. So what do we always say? The best ability is availability, and Xavier Howard was not available for the Dolphins down the stretch. However, there were some games he played really well on the opposite side of Jalen Ramsey. When Jalen Ramsey returned to the Dolphins' defense, or should I say started with the Dolphins' defense after that offseason knee surgery, he really elevated the level of play among several different secondary guys. Xavier Howard was one of them. So I think there's substance, there's, su there's a conversation to be had about restructuring the Xavier Howard contract. There's also a conversation of to be had about just moving on from Xavier Howard altogether. I think it's a great question. And when you think of the other free agents, guys like Christian Wilkins, guys like Andrew Van Ginkle, guys on the offensive line like Connor Williams and maybe even Rob Hunt, who all need new contracts, maybe Xavier Howard is going to be what they call a cap casualty, where the Dolphins don't have the cap space to re-sign everybody, and they choose to sign other more productive players than they do Xavier Howard. Christine Wilkerson, not Christian Wilkins, though. Uh, maybe a distant cousin. Question here. Should we re-sign Connor Williams or just let him walk? Feel like he's a better guard than center. This is an interesting question, and sometimes my opinion with this is not popular. Earlier in my perfect offseason video, I talked about the Dolphins with Connor Williams and without. They played nine games with Connor Williams. They played nine games without. The nine games with Connor Williams... The Dolphins were 7-2. and two. The nine games without Connor Williams, they were 5-4. and four. Now, I'm not simply saying if you have Connor Williams, you win the most of your games. If you don't, you lose most of the games. But you look at the metrics of the offensive line performance with Connor Williams compared to the offensive line performance without, they were significantly better and better as a unit with Connor Williams in the lineup. In nine games with Connor Williams, they allowed eight sacks as a team. In nine games without Connor Williams, the Dolphins allowed 25 sacks. Those numbers are very telling. And again, that's just one component of offensive line play. But I think you can certainly conclude that Connor Williams elevated the level of play of this Miami Dolphins offensive line, which is why he's a free agent. I want the Dolphins to prioritize signing in this offseason. But let me know what you think. Because again, there's not a perfect science to this stuff. And as I mentioned, my opinion sometimes is unpopular with Dolphins fans. Let me know down in the comment, what would you do with Connor Williams? Type S for sign, or if he's another cap casualty, type P for pass. Because I'll tell you what, some team is going to pay Connor Williams. I want it to be the Miami Dolphins. Let me know what you think. Type S for sign or P for pass. This question is coming in from Ray Finkel. When are Derrick Henry jerseys going to be available? <laughs> Ray, I love the way you think, especially when you consider uh, Derrick Henry's comments on the Bussin' with the Boys podcast by Barstool, where he said, I wanted Miami to draft me. I wanted to be a Dolphin. I thought I was going to be a Dolphin. We all know what happened. He went on to have a prolific career with the Tennessee Titans, and he's a free agent now in 2024. In his last game at Nissan Stadium, he basically gave a farewell curtain call to the entire crowd, saying, deuces, see you later. And I think he does have some gas left in the tank, despite him being a little bit long in the tooth. Now, you look at the Dolphins' running back room, and it's pretty tough to beat. you got a guy who just set the Dolphins' franchise record in rushing touchdowns in Raheem Mostert. You've got arguably the most exciting rookie running back in Devon Achan, who set an NFL record per 100 carries for yards per carry. Incredible stuff there. And then throw in, for good measure, the veteran presence of a guy like Jeff Wilson Jr. That's a busy running back room already. I don't know if you've got a spot there for Derrick Henry. From Dolph Fan. 
Should the Dolphins give more carries to Achan next season? You read my mind. Look, I, I, don't, I know it's not as simple as saying, hey, Raheem Mostert's your, your workhorse, your bell cow, and Devon Achan's your exciting, dynamic running back. But that is kind of what this has the feel to it as far as the Dolphins running back room is concerned. I just kind of outlined how I feel about the Dolphins running back room. Very, very good. And the numbers back that up. Career year for Raheem Mostert. Breakout rookie season for Devon Achan. There's a lot to be said about the talent in this Dolphins running back room. And with that, I think Devon Achan showed in that playoff game he can be a guy that carries the ball between the tackles. And he can be a guy that carries it 20 times a game like Raheem Mostert was. So I think each individual game has its own unique flow. I trust guys like Mike McDaniel and hopefully Frank Smith as the offensive coordinator to determine how to allocate that football, whether it be primarily to Raheem Mostert or more to Devon Achan. Either way, those are two talented backs. Want to remind you to subscribe to the channel. Don't miss out because let me tell you, we do these live shows every single week. We bring you daily Dolphins content covering the Aqua and Orange in all every single angle you can think of. Subscribe. Join our live mailbags every single week. The link to subscribe is below. I'm telling you, you will not regret subscribing to Dolphins today.